up, you beautiful bastards? Hope you're having a fantastic Friday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. And if you're new here on Fridays, we do things a little bit differently. On Fridays, I try to cover stories from earlier in the week that we weren't able to get around to and also cover more viewer requested stories. And so with that said, let's jump into it. And the first thing we're gonna talk about this week, I, I got a ton of requests for more information around this, is how did our testing go this week? And if you're new to this channel or if you haven't watched the shows this week, in addition to the regular Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Philip DeFranco Show at the regular time in the afternoon, at least in the United States, this week I also posted one to two story morning videos on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday covering topics that we thought were probably more likely to get us demonetized or have our video suppressed where it's not showing up on recommended or home pages. Right, the general thinking of I want to cover this topic, the audience will get more content here and if it does get dinged, it doesn't drag down an entire Philip DeFranco show. And so the results this week we got are... <laughs> Nothing is clearer to me. So this week, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Philip DeFranco shows, the things that I was trying to keep clean, uh, all of them got demonetized. The Wednesday video was also suppressed, but then that got reversed upon review. None of the morning videos got hit by YouTube. In fact, the Thursday morning video was number one trending on YouTube. And so nothing is clearer to me. But I guess on a positive note, a bunch of you love the, all the additional news coverage. And looking at this week, the only thing I could really do is try and make a semi-educated guess and uh, the three videos that had been dinged, obviously it's only two now. The only thing they had in common was the coverage of the Argento story this week, which I, I think could make sense, given what that story is about, the metadata that goes along with it, that could be a reason why those got hit. But the thing that kind of throws a wrench into that idea is I saw other news channels covering it where they had ads displayed on those videos. And it wasn't even just the mainstream guys, you had like indie liberal outlets like the Young Turks talked about it, they had ads. Which I will say was actually kind of shocking to me given a uh, Jenks hot take on the issue. We all, relatively speaking, acknowledge that most 17 year old males in that position would be thrilled. And maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm totally wrong. And no, they would be horrible, like, oh, you're gonna give me oral sex and you're beautiful and you're gonna have, to have sex with me. I don't want it. I don't want it under any circumstance. Maybe. And by the way, and everybody's different. Me, I'll be honest with you, I would have not liked it, loved it, okay? And people, sometimes people will say, oh, no, 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 you think you would have liked it, but you would have been traumatized. No, I know myself, I would have loved it, okay? Now, that doesn't mean everybody's like me. People can be traumatized, everybody's different. And while the video didn't get dinged, if you look through the comments and the likes versus dislikes, there were a lot of people that had issue with that. And I mean, one, because he was disregarding California law, the age of consent there is 18. People saying that he was being a hypocrite, that it was disgusting, that he was saying because she was attractive that somehow it makes it more okay. Saying that he was promoting a double standard where if you had a 37 year old man and a 17 year old girl that, you know, would he have the same reaction there? And essentially saying that what he was putting out there into the world just adds to the the stigma for male victims. And that was something Jimmy Bennett addressed when he released his newest public statement. Trying to explain his actions at the time, saying I tried to seek justice in a way that made sense to me at the time because I was not ready to deal with the ramifications of my story becoming public. At the time, I believed there was still a stigma to being in the situation as a male in our society. I didn't think that people would understand the event that took place from the eyes of a teenage boy. And a note that I would wanna say here is I don't know what actually happened between the two people in this case, but I do believe, I am of the mindset, that the genders of the accused and accuser don't change whether an allegation is valid or not. Right, a big part of a lot of these allegations is the abuse of position and power. And that's in addition to the actual breaking of a law. But all of that said, I'm straying from the main point here. The morning news videos are something that I do want to continue moving forward with. I think that long term it is still going to help us make sure that the Philip DeFranco show, once we once we figure a few more things out, it'll stay safer. But I guess the biggest thing is just in the midst of all of this, Thank you to you, you beautiful bastards. You guys being excited about the new news videos excited me and excited the team. You guys liking more, sharing more. I saw even more people going to defrancoelite.com to subscribe as a paying subscriber there. Thank you so much. I, I Whenever it comes to something like this, I, I struggle to find all of the, the, the appropriate words to really convey how I'm feeling. And so I end up just saying thank you, thank you, thank you a million times. I love your faces. I love what I do. I love this community and back and forth that we have. But yeah, that's where I'm gonna end this one. Then we had an update around the Kelly Marie Tran situation. In case you missed it, she had been on the receiving end of just a lot of hate, much of it also sexist and racist. And some of this appeared to be from fans that didn't like her in Star Wars The Last Jedi. A lot of it also seemed to be just ignorant piling on from other people. She ended up leaving social media and much of the conversation was just from, from outsiders looking in or other members of the cast. But as of Tuesday, she posted an op-ed in the New York Times. A lot of people were saying, you know, what do you think of it? And before I say, I'll just read a few of her words. In it, she said, it wasn't their words, it's that I started to believe them. Their words seemed to confirm what growing up as a woman in 
a person of color already taught me, that I belonged in margins and spaces valid only as a minor character in their lives and stories. Their words reinforced a narrative I had heard my whole life, that I was other, that I didn't belong, that I wasn't good enough simply because I wasn't like them. And that feeling I realized now was and is shame, a shame for the things that made me different, a shame for the culture from which I came from. And to me, the most disappointing thing was that I felt it at all. And she then goes on to talk about how she is aware of just what a privileged position she is in, that she gets to tell these stories and, and, and open doors. Saying she knows how important that is, she is not giving up, and in fact, she's just getting started. And I will say, while I fully appreciated the whole thing, kind of as a, as a white guy, I could really only identify with a very small part of the op-ed, that the worst part of getting hate from people online is when it's something you already think about yourself or something they make you believe. Now for me, having done this for so long, it, it's really just the things I already think about myself. But also, I have what I call a big small spotlight. Right, I'm fortunate enough to talk to one to two million people every day, but I'm not Star Wars big spotlight. Right, I'm not entering into a long-standing beloved franchise. The closest I'll ever get to that is when you're number one on trending and people that don't know you watch your stuff and will let you know how garbage they think you are. And I think the thing that kind of always bugged me with the, the Kelly Marie trans situation and the, the the amount of hate that she was getting was you can dislike her role in the movie, you can dislike whatever about the character, but why would you then harass the, the actor? And I mean, this is a genuine question. What do you think that accomplishes? And, and I say to you, wouldn't it even, if, if you have a, a real gripe, wouldn't it make more sense to, to go after the casting director, the actual director, the writers? Right, because I know that there's no stopping your hate, but I'm just very confused as far as the, the target. But then again, looking at the, the kind of hate she received, I think, uh, some of it did not really have to do with the movie. But yeah, that's where I'm gonna leave that one. But from that, I wanna share some stuff I love today and today in awesome, brought to you by betterhelp.com slash DeFranco. And BetterHelp, if you don't know, is the fantastic place and service that gets you affordable private online counseling. Right on your computer, your tablet, your phone, you get access to a licensed, trained, experienced, accredited psychologist. And it's so easy. All you gotta do to get started, just go to betterhelp.com slash DeFranco, you fill out a questionnaire, they match you with a counselor, and you could start counseling today. And I always like to mention this, but they're not just a sponsor of the PDS. It is a service I personally Use. I feel like talking with someone, especially in a way that is extremely convenient for my time, it's given me the opportunity to obviously do the part where you unload and you vent, but also gain tools for how to deal with relationships and just other parts of my life. And here's the thing, even if you don't mess around with betterhelp.com slash DeFranco, which I think is good for you, it helps the show obviously as well. I hope that even me just mentioning the, the topic of mental health and, and what I'm personally doing, that if, if you haven't been open to talking to someone in the past, maybe you're a little more open. Maybe you give something like that a try because I think it's something that everyone could really benefit from. And the first bit of awesome today is kind of just self-promo. Uh, the Rogue Rocket podcast that we had messed around with at the old office, we finally now brought it back. And we just launched a 70 minute kickoff episode over at defrancoelite.com, but also for available for everyone right now, we uploaded an, an embarrassing, seven minute clip to the vlog channel that you can check out after today's show that I'll link to down below. So there's that. Then we had Life Noggin giving us what happens when you get rabies. Then we had Ted Ed asking, can you solve the Leonardo da Vinci riddle? We got the company trailer for Battlefield Five. We got a bad lip reading for a White House press briefing. We had Ian Kung doing a video on a black James Bond. And if you wanna see the full versions of everything I just shared, the secret link of the day, anything at all, links as always are in the description down below. And then let's talk about this story out of Bloomington, Illinois. And this story unsurprisingly blew up given the headline, Bloomington police discover over 200 penises during raid at funeral employees' home. There was a man collecting penises from dead bodies. Uh, no, there wasn't actually, it was all a hoax. But honestly, isn't the thing that's really scary and sad is that for a second you thought it was real? Like really think about that for a second, that, that we live in a world where we go, yeah, that's definitely possible. And honestly, the way that this year is going, even if this story was real, I don't know if it would make top 10 craziest stories. The main point, the reason people found out that this was fake is they found out it originated on Fox News dash us.com. And so actually on that note, if you are under the age of 60 years old and you saw this story on that website, and you thought it was real, just just leave the internet forever, please. Also, the thing that's most unfortunate, but also maybe the most hilarious thing about this is that the actual coroner, McLean County Coroner Kathy Davis, will for the rest of time, or at least until the internet stops existing, have her name and picture associated with articles where she had to release a statement denying a story about 200 severed penises. So you know, just another day on the internet. And then let's talk about something really interesting we saw out of California this week. On 
Wednesday, the California State Senate passed a bill to automatically expunge or reduce marijuana convictions. The bill passed 22 to 8 in the Senate, and now it just needs Governor Jerry Brown to sign it. And so with this, there's the question of, okay, well, how does this work? Well, one, this applies to cases between 1975 and 2016, when California passed its legal marijuana law. And two, the cases in general that would qualify would be nonviolent felony convictions for possession or distribution and other nonviolent misdemeanor crimes. And so with any year, specifically by July 1st, 2019, the DOJ is required to have compiled and given a full list of eligible cases to the DA's office. After that, the DA's office will have another year to dispute any cases they think shouldn't be eligible. And that would most likely mean people that the DA's office recognizes as having violent histories, having a severe enough past criminal conviction. And so then, after the July 1st, 2020 deadline, the law would then kick into gear and specifically give priority to anyone serving a jail sentence. And if this story sounds somewhat similar to you, it's actually because we talked about the building blocks to this a while ago. Back in 2016, when California passed Prop 64 that legalized marijuana, they also retroactively changed some parts of the penal code. So for example, in the past, if you were caught with marijuana concentrates in any amount, you could have gotten a misdemeanor charge and up to a year in jail. But now, if you're of age, up to eight grams of marijuana concentrate is legal. Also, before 2016, penalties were pretty harsh for people underage in possession of marijuana. For example, if you had more than an ounce of marijuana as a minor, you could face up to six months of jail time. But now, the punishment is an infraction and a combination of drug education and community service. But even after Prop 64, the catch at that time was people still had to go and petition the courts to reduce or expunge their crimes on their own. And you didn't have a ton of people taking advantage of this because, one, a lot of people didn't know that this was even a thing, and two, it costs money. You got lawyer fees, court fees. If you have a job, you have to take off work. But you also had a few DA offices in California that were taking it upon themselves to go and fix this. The San Francisco DA looked back to 1975, found 3,000 misdemeanor cases that might be eligible for erasure. Which, by the way, on the note of, well, how many convictions were there? How many people could be affected? Well, according to the California DOJ, they estimate that there are nearly 220,000 cases that are eligible for reduction or expungement. But with all of that said, where I want to end this story is on the debate of should this be a thing? Right, and the general argument for supporters of this bill is it is something that is not illegal now. We shouldn't be punishing these people. There's also a side angle I didn't even think of, which came from Joel Anderson, who is a Republican state senator. He praised the bill for potentially returning gun rights to people he thought should be able to have weapons, saying this bill will take those people off of the prohibited list, save us time and money. However, on the other side of this, you also had Republican lawmaker Jim Nielsen, who said, this directs us to forget any prior behavior that was illegal. They should not be given a pass. And so I pass the question off to you. Do you agree with Jim Nielsen here that if, if, you, if you broke the law before, even though the law has changed now, do you think they should still be punished, this thing should be held against them, or no, we're, we're in a new world and we should be living by these new rules. I, and if you even remotely know me, I think it's pretty obvious that I don't believe that nonviolent marijuana related crimes, I don't think they should be held against people. But it isn't about each individual story. My personal takeaway is about the back and forth here. I, and whether you agree or disagree with me, I'd love to know what you think. And then let's talk about updates around that chaotic and messy YouTube beauty vlogger story we covered Monday. It involved massive names in the beauty vlogger and entertainment space. On one side, you had people like Jeffree Star. And on the other side, you had Laura Lee. Manny MUA, Gabriel Zamora, and Nikita Dragon. And instead of rehashing the entire situation to kind of just hit on the main point, there's a now deleted photo posted with all four kind of flipping off the camera, and the caption makes it appear that it is about Jeffree Star. Then, after some back and forth that also involves Zamora saying that Jeffree Star is a racist, the internet took it upon themselves to find old, offensive, problematic tweets from these four. And most noted and pointed out among all the things that were pointed out were tweets from Zamora and Lee. One from Zamora where he uses the N word, and one for Lee where she says black people should pull up their pants so that they can run from the police faster. Right there's massive backlash online. When we last talked about this, Laura Lee had made a video that is now at over 7 million views. And I have not seen a video that horribly received in a very, very long time. At that point, she had lost around a quarter million subscribers. And as of recording this video right now, she has lost over half a million subscribers. Manny MUA also released an apology video and lost over 200,000 subscribers. But then, interestingly enough, the person that initially posted the photo, Zamora, comes out with a video where he apologized. And he ends up gaining over 300,000 subscribers. Although I do want to note the quality of his apology video is, is, it's good. It actually feels like, or I'll just read some of the top comments. Top comment with 88,000 likes. Wow, a real apology. Laura needs to take this as a great example. This felt like I was sitting with a friend. It felt honest and real. This is an apology video. As far as the ups and downs of the situation, that is where we are there. And once again, with Laura Lee, I, we haven't seen something like this since the fine bros. I mean, there were live streams of people cheering on her losing subscribers. Her viral apology video being memed and fantastically parodied. I retweeted some stuff. <laughs> and by retweet, I mean tweet them myself, but I'm gonna say retweet because it sounds better and like I'm detaching myself from the situation. I can't even look at myself.
And it's also not just followers, this is definitely going to affect her money. Partners and businesses she was aligned with severed ties. Beauty retailer Ulta released a statement. We have decided not to move forward with the launch of Laura Lee Los Angeles. Sunglasses company Diff. We've taken this issue very seriously and do not support the comments that were made. And her frames are no longer available on the website. Cosmetics firm Morphe that put all her products is sold out, removed images of her from the website. And a subscription box started by the name of BoxyCharm, they, they made a video denouncing her. And that's where we are right now with this story. I've also had people asking, you know, what do I think about it? And to that I'll say, I'm not sure what to think right now. The reason that this story stands out to me though, one, I think it is evidence and an example that different internet communities that we have online react far differently to scandals. We've talked about far worse scandals and less genuine reactions and people have just done incredibly well from them. But then also too, it's just we really don't see many things like this happen. Like usually when you see a scandal like this, yes, okay, the, the brands leave, uh, maybe you lost a show, the fans stay, but I, I guess in this situation it's, it's if some someone feels genuine or not. And so it feels like that's very much one of the main things here, along with just really owning what happened in the situation, right? Really calling yourself out, which I think is incredibly important if you are genuinely trying to become a better person, or at least your version of what you think a good person is. So that's where I'm gonna leave that one and I'll pass the question off to you. What do you think the difference with this situation is compared to pretty much any other outrage story involving celebrities that we've talked about in the past? And that's where I'm going to end today's show. But also remember, I want these to be a conversation. So whether it be the the last story, the first one, anything in between. Let me know what you're thinking in those comments down below. Also, while you're at it, if you want to support the show, you like this video, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss these daily Philip DeFranco shows. And if you're on your phone, make sure you ring that bell to turn notifications on for these videos. But with that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.